Right. Everyone, look at this concept. In the last session, we have written a couple of web series programs. In the last session, we have written a couple of web series programs. Like, what is the first program I wrote in terms of web series? I wrote a feature method. From the feature method, I invoked it, right? I wrote a feature method. From the feature method, I invoked web series. If you open that program, If you open this program, what I am doing here? This is my authentication key. This is the key what I am producing to prove that I am Satish. Now whatever the key I have, I have hard coded the key here. I have hard coded the key here. It is not a good practice to hard code the security keys on your programming. It is not a good practice to hard code the security keys on your programming. Because let anybody open, if somebody opens the program, they get my key. They can write the program from outside my application. They can copy this program and run from outside my application. So, it is not a good practice to hard code the security keys on your program. If you don't want to hard code the security keys, what is the alternative? If you don't want to provide the security keys, what is the alternative? The alternative one is put store the data in the object, store the security credentials in an object, write a query in system. Or else, store the security keys in a custom setting, paste them whenever you want. Or else, store the security keys as a label to the programming and paste them. Or else, store the security keys as a static resource and pull them. So, these are the alternatives what we have. If you don't want to hard code the security credentials on your programming, what is the other alternative? The other alternatives, create a custom object, store all your credentials in the object. Whenever you need, write a query and paste them. Or else, create a custom setting, store these credentials in the list custom setting, write a query, get the values. Or else, or else, create a label, create a labels, custom labels, you create these credentials as a passwords, you put your password as a label to the programming and fetch it. Or else, we can load this one as a static resource and upload it. These are the alternative ways what we have. But the problem is, I don't want to put these credentials on your programming. I don't want to include these credentials anywhere in the programming, not through hard coded or not through program. I don't want to include this as hard coded values or I don't want to include this as a appended values in the programming. Now what is the alternative? So I don't want to put my credentials. I don't want to use a word called credentials on my program. I don't want to write a program on which. I don't want to write a software query on which. I don't want to hard code. To avoid this, to make the process simple, Salesforce has introduced a concept called neighbor credentials. Salesforce has introduced a concept called neighbor credentials. Now, when you are writing a program, what are you doing here? When you are writing a program, what are you doing here? You are writing endpoint, creating endpoint, setting the endpoint, passing your key, then you are making a request. To avoid this, we have an alternative process. What is that alternative process? Neighbor credentials. What is the alternate process? Named credentials. What is that named credentials? Go to this. Named credentials. Under security controller, you are finding as named credentials. Go to these named credentials. Already I have created two of the named credentials. Let me create one more time. New. IP address. IP address. Here I was giving URL. What is the URL you want to use it? What is the URL we have? What is the URL? I already created the URL here. Let me take the URL from here. This is the URL I have. What are the URL you are going to use? Give the URL. Now they are asking. ID type. Anonymous for user, named principal. Anyone you can choose, but it is an open authentication, so I'm choosing anonymous. No authentication. Okay. I need a anonymous. Authentication protocol. I don't have any authentication. Right now I'm not using any security credentials for logging in. So I give what? No authentication. So enter your IP address and everything. ID type is anonymous. Authentication. No identification.
Now, already address is available, so group 1. Now we want this tension. Now when I want to make a program, now I will not give any point URL and all this. this. Simply I give what? Simply I give this as URL. So go back to the program. What is my name prediction? IP address. So go to that IP address. So what I am going to do here now? What I am going to do here now? Instead of writing all these programs, simply, instead of writing all these programs, simply I write a single program here. What is a single program? Call out, call out, set endpoint equal to call out the colon, the name of your, name of your endpoint, like your period, name to credentials, right? Whatever the name to credentials you have created, that we are going to use here. I have created a name to credentials. Whatever the name to credentials you have created, that I am going to use here. Let me give named example. I am creating a public void. So how do you make a request? HTTP is equal to the first part set in point set in point now in this end point what I am giving here call out now with the end point I am giving call out generally when you say end point we are going to give when you say end point what we are going to give you are only going to give but here I am going to give call out what the name the credential name I give IP address 1 call out Followed by that's question mark. What is the URL of this? As per our query is concerned, you have some IP address we have to pass. So what is this? Whatever the URL we have given there, ordinarily it is taken into consideration. So you have namespace followed by anything that you want to pass, you give it. You have a namespace followed by anything that you want to pass, give it here. Once you give it here, then I'm going to give request dot set method. HTTP. Now, as of now, we have not done the authentication. You will be finding almost similar. But when you go for the authentication, then as you don't give the username and password, you will find the difference. As of now, we are doing only open authentication. We have not done any authentication like security credentials, we are not used. There is a reason you are not finding much difference here. But when you go to the authentication with the new credentials, you clearly find the difference that we are not passing any credentials. Okay. So as a demonstration about the pre basic HTTP, I am giving this example. HTTP response, response equal to p dot send. Then I am going to have result equal to. Now I am not going to convert this into XML to sync. I will make it open like this. So what is the format in which I wrote? Call out colon namespace. Your call out colon name and credential name. Whatever the name you give for name and credential, that name I give. So let us go to this and execute. Command button. Submit. Action. What is the name of the action I gave? Call me. Submit. 
you're getting the question. But in that case, you will give any end point there, I give the end point as one. What program you call it? We call it the end point as one. We are calling a named example in which in which we are invoking call out. Call out colon it is a namespace. You are named credential namespace what we give. Named credential namespace what we give. Are you clear? So here I'll make one extension. I'll I'll make one more extension. What I will do is I will also give this give this also in the name credentials. So let me go back. I want to give the complete form. Go to the name credentials. Now we are making a request. Call out IP address 1. Go back to the page. What happened? I simply give. To understand, I give question mark and parameter. Now what happened? Did you give any report you are here? So, did you give any report you are here? No. So, do you know any authentication process what we are using? We don't know. Now, let us come back to the previous example. I hope this is clear for everyone. So, what is the purpose of this name credentials? We don't want to enter our endpoint URL. We don't want to enter our credential information. Right now, it is an open authentication. You are not understanding the difference. You are not understanding the major difference. As of now, you are feeling that instead of endpoint URL, we are giving a call out. But down the line, down the line, when I go, it will be asking my username and password. It will be asking my, okay, consumer key, consumer ticket. There, without entering those credentials in the programming, I will be able to connect. Without entering those credentials. So, if you don't want to append your credentials in the programming, then I will go for what? Named credential. Named credential. Let me do this example now. So, here, what we have? This is API key. Now, I am giving. Let us go back once again. I will try to create one more neighbor credentials. Run this layer. When I say for a user, who are the password authentication? Who are the password authentication? So when you go to this, who are the, you will ask me, who is the authentication provider? Scope, we need to provide these details. No, you want to go with password authentication, then they would ask me, username, password. This I am trying to avoid it. Then I am going to avoid it in the feature. So we have to create it. Now what I can do, go back to the same. How do you define the call now? How do you define the call? Same program. Public. Void. So what are you going to do? Same program you are going to use. Only the changes. What is the change? The name and credential should be changed as instead of call IP address. Thank you. Now, am I, am I hard coding my value? Here I have hard coded my value. Where is the feature for that? I hard coded my, my key. Now, am I hard coding the key here now? I am not entering anything, just I kept in the name of credentials, I am using it. Right. Now, go for this. Right. Now to know the difference much better, 
I'll give one extension. To know this difference much better, I'll give one extension. Look at the point. String. System dot. Focus dot. Get. Get end point. We are putting so go back to this call this one or the name of name example. I hope you got the point. Simply we are avoiding the endpoint and credentials instead of writing the program, instead of writing the endpoint and credentials on the program, I am registering everything with the named credentials. I am calling that named credentials in the program with the call out caller the guy. You see one line I am avoiding the endpoint as well as credentials. I am avoiding the endpoint as well as the credentials. Shown, but the request should be shown. Go back. Got the value here? Done. Now look at the point. Where did I write here? Now already I kept the end point. End point is already given. But this thing should be given after. This thing should be given after. Request. We are writing the request before the end point. That's the reason you are not getting the end point. I invoked it before setting it. Go back, see the value. Now, what is this? Call out currency. Now, is it giving the URL? It is giving the URL of this. It is not giving. So, somebody, when somebody is trying to track it, the encryption mechanism is taken care of by Salesforce. The encryption mechanism is taken care of by Salesforce. If somebody uses get, get endpoint, they will not be knowing the endpoint what I am using. They will not be knowing the endpoint what I am using. The same thing I am going to set it like this. Instead of this, I will set it like this. When I set it like this, the first order set in point. Set in point sum, I am going to give it away the word. I gave to me one. I told set the endpoint. So let us go back and see. What are we getting yet? Are you getting? That means your credentials are hidden. In this case, your credentials are not hidden. But when you take a name and credentials, what is happening? Your credentials are hidden. Your username and password, what you are sending, are you able to see? So even the developer when you try to fix them, you will not be understanding what yes, what is the backend process what we are using. What is the backend process what we are using. So we can hide, we can hide our security mechanism. We can hide security mechanism. We can hide the security mechanism. We can hide our security mechanism as well as credentials. We can hide our security mechanism as well as credentials. But there are some drawbacks for this. We will see it in the further classes. When you go with the whole education, you will find the drawbacks of it. Okay. As of now, we are understanding that Instead of passing your endpoint URL credentials in the programming, we can avoid it by 
by simply creating a named credentials. When you create a named credentials, the details about your endpoint and credentials what you have provided, they will not be fetched using the programming. So the programmer will cannot hardcode it or cannot fetch it automatically. So they will be encrypted and taken care of by Salesforce to transfer. The Salesforce will take care of transferring them securely. The encryption mechanism, the Salesforce will take care. Right, boss? Fine. Can we deploy? Yes, we can deploy. It's not. But not so. Using a force.com ID, we will be deploying it. It's a program only, right? It's a programming only. Named credentials will be created in the production. Program will be created in the sandbox. Right. We will create the named credentials in the production and provide the credential name to the developers. The developers will write in the sandbox. Named credentials will be done in the production. We will create the named credentials in the production. Right. If you are giving the username password to the developer, then there is no use of hiding the security. Now, if I give username, password, endpoint, everything is the level part, then where is the question of security? Right. I can save them in the production, give the credentials to the developer, what is the cloud, use the name and credential cloud, make a request. Now, the developer doesn't understand what credentials he is using, what endpoint he is using. Right, boss? Well, let us see. I hope you are clear with this. So, how did you achieve it? Simply created a name and credential, and I called, how did you call him? Call out. Call out, you are using call out colon namespace name. Call out colon namespace name. I hope you are clear with this. Right. Let us go to the next part of the story. Let us go to the next part of the story. We are going for authentication. So first, we will try to go with the declarative way of authenticating. Declarative way of authenticating yourself. Declarative way of authenticating yourself from the Facebook or from the LinkedIn. How to authenticate yourself from the Facebook or LinkedIn. So, <coughs> let us take the basic steps. The basic declarative way of authenticating. Then I will go for open the So, in the declarative way, if you want to authenticate yourself, what is the procedure you follow? First, let us understand the code what I am going to use. First, let us understand the code what I am going to use. I am going to use some code here. Let me explain the code what I am using. We have an object called prepare user. We have prepare user data. First, we are trying to create prepare user data. Username, first name, last name, username, alias name, email. So, what we are taking? First name, change me. Whatever the name we are going to get from the Give my username, password, then data dot email not equal to null, then email equal to data dot email. I give default values. If the email ID is not equal to null, if the LinkedIn email ID is not equal to null, send an email. First name is not equal to null, send an email. So what is this? These are the default values. These are the default values. If the data is coming from your Facebook, with that Facebook data you create. If the data is coming from LinkedIn, with that LinkedIn data you create. If the data is coming from the Twitter, the Twitter data you create. If there is no data that is coming, use my data. Or give him a point. I gave a dummy value because in the LinkedIn you might have filled all your data, may not be filled. I am not sure. In the Google you might have filled all your data, may not be filled. I am not sure. So the data which I require to create a user is first name, last name, email I require. If you don't provide, I will take my dummy values. If you provide whatever the data you are providing, then I will take it. Then I have taken it. Once you have created the first name, last name, everything is done. Then you are trying to create username equal to first name plus some random number. If you want to take a random number, I can take it or else I can say. Integration.
this is so user name is if you are logging from the facebook facebook user name your facebook first name the facebook what are the first name we give that facebook first name and the data integration 94.com like this i created then finally what we got here user name equal to user name email equal to email last name equal to last name first name alias name local language everything is reset this is what preparing the preparing the local data preparing the user data then we are got here create a user user new create a user prepare user data look at the format prepare user data you so once you have created the user data then we are calling some functions we are calling if you are contains salesforce network id then create red query create one account here create one account else create one contact then we are trying to insert so profile id be equal to what is the profile we are giving id from the profile where name equal to community profile so what is the community profile we are going to give a name on the community what is the profile we are giving that name if you say salesforce platform user salesforce platform user will come if you say xyz it will be xyz what is the profile name we are giving the profile name will come here so we are trying to create a user this is small code which we are using to insert the data so what is the community profile customer community standard profile standard standard profile standard if the community is enabled in case the application if community is enabled then i am going for what customer community user if community is not enabled what is the profile i am giving standard user what is the profile we are giving standard user otherwise i will go with one more profile what is the profile is it existing code which i am trying to tell you the people are trying to create a user when you want trying to create a user what will be the basic data you have to provide first name last name email all this basic data so i will take a profile name as standard platform user this is the code what i put so i have some sample data i took this code with this code i'm creating a new apex class we'll come back to the code one more time listen listen to the code new code okay now in this case what is your requirement first you want to integrate you want to integrate linkedin with the salesforce you want to integrate linkedin with salesforce i want to log into the i want to log into the salesforce with a linkedin username password i have a linkedin username password with a linkedin username password of mine i want to log into the salesforce i have a facebook username password with a facebook username password i want to log into your i want to log into your salesforce logging into the salesforce with the linkedin credentials so what i'm doing first i'm logging into the linkedin developer dot linkedin i am logging into the linkedin as a developer then i am going for my apps already i logged in as a developer so i am going to my linkedin so i am logging into my linkedin as a developer So what I am doing here? Create application. Create application. Give some credentials. Then upload a logo. I have some logo on my desktop which I am using here. application type education website url business email
what did i do i logged into the linkedin i logged into the linkedin as a developer i logged into the linkedin as a developer created a application in the linkedin now i got my application when i got my application what are you getting here client id this client id and client secret are like user name password now once i created an application what i'm doing go to the sales force set up administrator security controllers and we have authentication products new authentication products who is your authentication provider linkedin is your authentication provider name consumer key what is your consumer key consumer secret so in the application when you create an application in the linkedin you got a consumer key consumer secret client id is a consumer key client secret is a consumer secret then registration handler select the apex class randa as satish mela then what happened application is created so authentication for what did i do simply client id as consumer key client secret as consumer secret and selected the apex class what i created then run like satish when you got here you are able to see call back you are here what is the call back you are copy this call back you are go to the linkedin in the linkedin what you find what copy that you are whatever the call back you are only got in the authentication provider copy that so once you copy it update then connection is established between both the system connection is established between both the system i want to check whether connection is running or not so meanwhile before i check i will create one domain as it takes some time to create i'll just go with the domain creation first go to the domain creation how do you create a domain domain management my domain migration 94 check the availability it will be pending so meanwhile i will go and check my connection so what is this test only installation take this and see whether salesforce and linkedin both are connected or not whether my linkedin and salesforce both are connected or not it is only testing process so what is the url login dot salesforce we get the url called login dot salesforce dot what is ask me when i enter login dot salesforce dot com that take me to what linkedin <coughs> what the language they give u a s so i'm logging into my account it's only testing process when i log in if everything is working fine you get a sample data that means yes your connection is working properly your connection is working properly now you need to run it you only tested is only for testing purpose is only for testing purpose if you want to make it live if you want to make it live your domain should be activated your domain should be active meanwhile i'll quickly repeat the steps what i followed so what did i do first went to my application create a application enter your company name name description logo application data education website url business url business hours when i enter this automatically what happened once i enter this automatically this is created client id client secret what type of information we are allowing them to access my basic profile my basic profile because that is only my email address if it is only company information like that basic details i want to collect basic details 
Then once you are done with this, what did I do? I went to I went to security controllers, authentication providers, new authentication provider, selected LinkedIn, enter your consumer key, consumer secret, select the FX class what I created, then run like Satish secret. When you run like Satish and secret, then automatically we get the page in one format. Once you got the page like this, take the callback URL, register with the the LinkedIn add as or 2.0, click on add, update. Right, this is what we have done. So now let us see. Right, got it. Login. Your domain is ready. <coughs> Right over. Deploy to. The domain name is. Now what I'm doing? Log out of your account. Your domain name is created, right? So scroll down. When you scroll down the domain page, you're finding authentication configuration. When you scroll down, you're finding authentication configuration. Click on edit. What is the point again? Then, log out of this account. Log out of your Log out of my LinkedIn. Now when you log out, what are you finding at the bottom? LinkedIn. The Salesforce page at the bottom, what are you finding? <laughs> Click on the LinkedIn. Then what is asking you? Username, password of. Enter my process. When I enter my username, password, then what happened? So keep it set to the Salesforce. I entered my username password. I logged into the Salesforce now. A new user was created as there is no existing user. New user was created with the name of Satish. Look at this. What is the username I give? Satish at the rate of integration 94. Look at this. What is the mail ID? Satish at the rate of integration name. A user is created. Now let me log in next time. Log out. LinkedIn. Entering your username. Satish. I'm giving. When you click on allow access, <coughs> so what happened? User was able to log in. So I was able to log into the LinkedIn with the username and password of Salesforce. Now what was this process called? Authentication provider. What type of authentication? Declarative. Declarative authentication. Most of the process is what? Drag and drop model. It's a declarative format of authenticating. So I am able to log into my Facebook, I am able to log into my Salesforce with what name? With the LinkedIn username password. I am able to log into my application, Salesforce application with the whose user details with the LinkedIn username password. I hope you are clear. Similarly, let me try with Facebook also. I will give you the Facebook. The same example, I will try with the Facebook again. I hope you got the process. The same procedure again, I am going to repeat. Once again, check out. I am going to integrate with the Facebook. If you want to integrate with the Facebook, let us see this. First, let me enable the language settings because the Facebook may give you different language formats. So, accept all different formats. 
Okay. Now let us see. How do you integrate with the Facebook? I will log into the Facebook as a developer. Developer.facebook.com. I am logging into the Facebook as a developer. Log into the Facebook as a developer. So already my Facebook is logged in. No issue with that. Then you are able to see here what? My new app. Create new app. Log into the developer. Facebook as a developer. Create app. What this boss? It won't. Now, the application was created. This is my ID of my application. Once the application is created in the Facebook, then go to settings. Click on the settings. Go to application ID, application secret. Application ID, application secret. I got application ID, application secret. Then what I am doing? When you scroll down, choose the category. What is the category? Education. Now what are you finding here? Add platform. Add platform. This is an option called add platform. So first, once you created, we got application ID, application secret. The add platform will come to you only when you create authentication provider there. So what should I do? Go back to the Salesforce. First I created a connected app. I created an application on Facebook. I went to Salesforce again. I am trying to create authentication. How are you going to create? How are you going to create? Set up. Set up. Administer. Security controllers. Authentication providers. New authentication. We have Consumer key, Facebook application ID. What on the Facebook application ID is there? That is your consumer. Consumer secret, application secret. Then registration handler, registration handler. Now, in the registration handler class, I have to make a change because already the user is there, right? Already we have user. No issue, I will try to change that user. Then social registration. That is the reason we have used their random run the application like this. I'm just trying to avoid the conflict. I'm just trying to avoid the conflict. Okay. So run the application like Once it's saved, you're getting what? Callback. Take this callback you want. Go to the Facebook. Now in the Facebook, what are you finding here? Add platform. Choose the platform as website. Give the callback you want. Save the changes. So once I created the authentication provider, we get a callback you want which I registered again. Then, go to the app review. Go to the app review. Enable the application. You are making the application live. You are making your application live. When you make your application live, both of them are going to work more. 
Now let us see whether it is working fine or not. So what I can do, take a test you want. Take the test URL, login.salesforce.com. So, already I logged in. So, give me directly a sufficient game. You give me my information. Right, boss? Let me log out my Facebook first. So connection is working fine. When the connection is working fine, what should I do? I should allow you to log in from I should allow you to log in from Facebook register. So what should I do? Go to the domain again. Go to the domain. In the authentication connection. Click on edit. Give it as I have enabled it. Now log out of this. Then what are you getting here? Log in with the. So most of the website when you say they ask you log in with the Google Plus, log in with the Twitter, log in with the Amazon. This is the process what they are following. Facebook. So. New user is created. So look at this. Satish test. New user is created. So who is this new user? Satish test user is created. Go back and see. One more user is created. Satish. At the rate of integration 94. So here we got integration 94 at the rate of satishpala.com. Here we got test Satish. Please remember the user as what? I made the user as what? Kiran Chandra. So we got one more user created here with the credentials of Facebook. Let me log out of this account. Once again, log in. Log in with Facebook. Please ask me why you are directly logged in. Basically, you didn't ask me the Facebook username and password, right? Because already I logged into this application. Already my Facebook is logged in. So straight away it is taking you to the application. So let me log out. Go to my Facebook. You ask my Facebook username and password. Right? You are able to log into the Facebook with the you are login to, able to log into the Salesforce with the Facebook username and password. What was this authentication provided? What was this authentication provided? If you remember, in the communities also we have one option. Let me go back. The same story will repeat with the communities also. So I got integration. People have followed this. Right? Navigation just look at the video, get the navigation. Okay. The navigation just get the look at the video and get the navigation. Only basic steps are there. So I want to create the same thing with communities. So I want to create a communities. How do you create a communities? Customize. Customize. Go to the communities. So all communities. It's already enabled. New community. Choose the community. Get started. Integration committee. I just gave the name. Manage and port it. So if 
You want to create a community, what is the first thing that we need to do? Go to the communities. You already done this process. You already done with this. So what do you want is this? Go to the administration, members, which people can log in. I told all the users who have a profile of all the users who have a profile of my committee user, only they can log in. I selected which profile users can log in. Then here we have tabs. Which tabs you want to show? Accounts. Contacts. So, then they ask, what is the branding? Apply the branding. Do you remember this process? Creation of communities. Do you remember the process? Very good. So, what is that? Login and registration. The login and registration, what they are asking now? Login with the username password of Salesforce or login with the LinkedIn username password. LinkedIn username password or Facebook username password. How do you want to log in? Log in with the LinkedIn username password or Facebook username password. I told. Right. Then they are asking. Do you want to allow self-registration? I told yes. Allow the people to make a self-registration. What is the profile of my company? What is the account? So, the community users can log in with the, their LinkedIn username password. The community users can log in with the LinkedIn username password. The community users can log in with the LinkedIn username password. The community users can log in with the LinkedIn username password. I created a community. Click on the settings. Activate. So your community is active. If your community is active, go back. Once again, I will remove the user details. Who is the user created? Because of Facebook, as I am trying to log in from my Facebook, I have only one Facebook account. So I don't want to be. Right. Okay. Right. So we got here. So did you activate the committees? We activate the committees. I'll go with one more time. Let me make it from the beginning again. Set up. What we are doing? Customize. We are going with communities. All communities. I am going to deactivate this existing community first. Why are you de deactivating the existing community? Once I create a community user, by default he will be user for rest of the communities. Community user if I create, he will be the user for rest of the communities. So I am trying to deactivate. Then go back to the new community. How are you creating the committees? New committee. New committee. Get started. Final integration. I give the committee name as integration. Then Then they are going to ask you, where is the committee? Administration, who can log into this committee? I told all the users who have my profile, my committee user profile, they can log in. Then they ask which tabs you want to show? Accounts, contacts, neighborhood. Then branding. Your choice, what you want to give. Then, login and registration. 
account login with the LinkedIn, login with the Facebook. Then self registration. Once you activated it, what is the URL we have? This is the URL we see. Copy the URL. This is the URL we have. they are asking for that or login with the LinkedIn or Facebook. Login with the LinkedIn or Facebook. So when you create a connectivity between your Facebook and LinkedIn then you will be able to access your details. You will be able to access your details. Sign up. Your details, whatever the details you are providing here, the Facebook details what you are providing there, both should be seen. Whatever the details you are providing here, the Facebook details what you are providing here should be seen. So I say LinkedIn. Click the LinkedIn. People can make the registration, the LinkedIn <coughs> login using. Or for me, maybe there will be a conflict in the user, right? As already we have done the user's creation, probably there will be a conflict. Then what will happen now? Tell me what is the reason for this? What is the conflict that we have? The conflict what we have is let me give you the conflict. What I have is what is the profile I told? Which profile users can log in? I told my committee, my committee profile, but what is the profile I gave in the programming? Then I give community user. Then I, then I give a profile called community user. So there is a difference between profile what I give in the program and profile what I give in this. That is the reason you are able to not able to log in. So this is the data of so work will be very small boss, but this testing is the biggest problem. So go back and make the changes in the programming. For the profile you created, my community user. So go back to the programming. This is what made a difference. So I'm giving here
Hello, access. It's not working for me. So I need to debug it. Let me check out. Maybe my license config on. Maybe it's because of the user program config there, maybe. But this is the procedure what we are using here. Right, boss? Okay. Let me come back. So I hope you have followed the